Good morning, everyone. My name is Davide Piccini, and I'm a senior scientist for Siemens Healthcare based in Lausanne, Switzerland. Today, I'll be talking about coronary MRI and how such a complex scan could be eventually turned into a one-click examination. These are my disclosures. As for the state of the art of coronary MRI, what we want to do is to image small and tortuous structures that are contained in a relatively large field of view. The acquisition is usually triggered and segmented over a large number of cardiac cycles. The data is acquired in a triggered delay that targets a period of a minimal cardiac motion, be it diastole or systole. A segment of the scan is not composed of pure data acquisition, but also contains modules for contrast generation like a T2 preparation, and it contains a navigator. The navigator is usually placed on top of the liver dome to monitor the position of the diaphragm at each cardiac cycle. An acceptance window is set up then to only keep data points acquired at end expiration. As one can very well imagine, user interaction is needed in all the stages of the planning from the placement of the field of view and the navigator to the definition of a trigger delay, the acquisition window and the acceptance window. Not only setting up such a complex scan requires a lot of expertise and it actually usually requires an expert user sitting at a console, but also the scanning itself is very inefficient because navigator means intrinsically an unpredictable scan time. Triggering and gating mean that only 5% of the whole scan duration is basically acquired data. There is no motion management and the scan is prone to failures because the breathing pattern could change during the acquisition. Last but not least, this is a purely anatomical scan with a fixed contrast for the dedicated application. Several groups have tried to address the shortcomings in the last years. Here I want to refer specifically to the talk of Dr. Claudia Prieta at the beginning of the session that presented the work performed at KCL. This consists of several components of high quality an image navigator, a, a flexible case first trajectory, advanced motion correction modules integrated in the reconstruction, patch based denoising, and so forth. The images that they show, especially in the last study compared with CTA, are truly of high quality. And here I want to explicitly wear my collaboration hat and show you our collaboration with the University Hospital in Lausanne and specifically with Professor Matthias Stuber on the technical side and Professor Jörg Schwitter on the clinical side. What we want to do is to work on a radically different approach of to coronary MRI. First of all, what we want to do is to take the needed expertise out of the equation so that everyone could perform a coronary scan. This means a wide field of view that covers all the anatomy of the heart, non-navigator placement, a one-click start, and a continuous acquisition. Secondly, the scan should become feasible in a clinical routine, therefore we want a fixed scan time. This also means continuous acquisition, and it means that we have to take care of the motion management in an advanced manner in the reconstruction. Last but not least, we envision that the scan could be somewhat modular so that other information besides anatomy could be extracted like Cine, flow, and eventually mapping. This is how we envision the prototype of the scan during the, uh, the setup from a user perspective. So we have a placement of a wide cubic field of view around the heart and the start of the scan is simply a one click. The acquisition then runs continuously regardless of the cardiac and respiratory motion. The module that is repeated consists in data acquisition plus a self-gated readout. And then only during the reconstruction we think how to sort the data and which ones to reconstruct. The acquisition is a 3D radial filos axis trajectory with a golden angle rotation that makes it very flexible and a repeated self-gating superior inferior readout. We have developed two kinds of reconstruction, one that is purely static and that can work at the scanner called similarity-based angiography, short SIMBA. This is basically a mapping of all the gating readouts into an n-dimensional space. Here the, gate, the readouts cluster in different bins. And what happens is that if we reconstruct all the data, we see that the image is blurred and motion degraded. Whereas if we select one of the clusters, like the most populated, the image becomes sharp because all the data in the cluster are self-consistent motion-wise. With the same raw data offline, we could perform a binning reconstruction. So the self-gated signal is used to divide the data into different cardiac and respiratory beans. And then we use the similarity among those beans to reconstruct a dynamic image with motion for cardiac and respiratory uh, physiology. Incidentally, those two techniques were awarded recipients for the Prochen Award at the SMRA, SIMBA in 2019 and a version of the ND reconstruction in 2015. This is an example on a volunteer. This is an acquisition performed with a fast interrupted steady state. 
And here you see how all the data is basically a very blurred motion degraded image, whereas the Simba cluster actually makes the coronary visible, although obviously the data set is noisier because it's less data. Here it's side by side. Two main studies running on patients with this and all included with ferromoxidol. One is at the University Hospital in Lausanne and the other is at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. Here you can see two subjects, a 19-year-old and a one-year-old with an anomalous RCA. This is the Simba reconstruction purely anatomical at the scanner. This is data instead of from Philadelphia. It's a patient of 11 years old, which you can see the anomaly of the RCA coming from the wrong coronary cusp. All these raw data, as I mentioned, could be then reconstructed offline. Here we have four examples with the XD grasp approach so that we can see the cardiac function and the respiratory motion as well. But what are those clusters that I mentioned earlier in this n-dimensional space? If we imagine to move uh, within these clusters and reconstruct an image for each of them, we see that uh, each cluster corresponds to a specific uh, cardiac and respiratory phase of the same data set. So at minimum, we could, for instance, do a dual phase reconstruction, reconstruct systole and diastole of the same data set. This further with uh, an XD Simba approach in which we use the similarities among the clusters to perform an XD grasp sort of reconstruction. And this is an example where all the data are put together. Simba reconstruction makes it noisier, but much sharper. And an XD Simba reconstruction using the similarities among clusters make the noise basically disappear and the anatomy is very clearly depicted. Data set, we have the example of the MRA close to the CTA. We see that uh, this patient had a stent in the pulmonary artery. We can see it black in the MRA and we can see how it will uh, create a lot of artifacts in the CTA. The coronaries are well visible in both data sets. Here are the reformats from the MRA in which you clearly see the stent in the pulmonary artery. So in conclusion, we presented a way of performing coronary MRA in one single click. So we have this cubic field of view. We can start with one click. Acquisition is continuous. The user don't have, doesn't have to do anything. And two kinds of reconstructions are performed. A similarity-based anatomical one that happens at the scanner. And then function can be extracted through a self-gated motion resolved 5D reconstruction. I would like to thank all our collaborators, specifically the CVMR team and the Cardiac MR Center in Lausanne, Professor Stuber and Professor Schwitter, and then our collaborators, Dr. Mark Fogel and Kevin Whitehead at CHOP, and you for your attention.